Ages ago, sorcerers of unmatched power sundered a world into four realms, sky, stone, fire, and water, then vanished. Over time, magicians learned to work spells only in their own realms and forgot the others. Now only the few who have survived the labyrinth and crossed the death gate know of the presence of all four realms, and even they have yet to unravel the mysteries of their severed world. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman's Dragon Wing. Dragon Wing is a 1990 novel in first of seven in the Deathgate cycle. I started this one actually way back in September of last year and finally finished it at the very beginning of July, if I'm remembering correctly. Now, the story starts off with a prologue that is a classic mix of catching your attention and giving you too much information and too little at the same time, which is to say you have no idea what's going on. Um, it's entire, entirely dialogue some unknown figure speaking to someone named Haplo, a member of a people that have recently escaped from their prison, the Labyrinth. They have been placed there by the Sartan, uh, while the Sartan um, no longer guard the prison. Um, it's kind of unknown stuff to the speaker anyways. So in chapter one, we are introduced to a prisoner heading into the execution block. Hugh the Hand um, is supposedly guilty of assassinating uh, Lord Rogar of Calith Keep, uh, this starts off very intense as I wasn't sure what would actually happen. Um, and this is actually good misdirection too as, how do I say this? Um, in some ways, Hugh is the main character, but he's not at the same time. At least he's set up as the, the main character. And then later in the book, he falls out of that role. Um, the story is r rather largely focused on a young prince and his potential death. The rulers of Aristagon, Eulandia and Vulcan, um, are his parents and they have an interesting relationship with him, to say the least. And elves and humans are also some of the main characters, um, though there is another one, and more is going on than is obviously revealed. It's a very much set into, I don't know, one of those stories where it's uh, the, the characters don't know as much information as obviously some other characters do, right? So after Hugh, we are introduced to Limbeck the Geg, of Het on Drevlin. Uh, gag gags are essentially dwarves, um, and they they are dwarves, and that work on some high-tech machine um, that they, well, that has been created by the mangers. Uh, they worship wells and the mangers, and the machine they created um, they see as sacred and alive. Um, I love how Weiss and Hick Hickman utilize, um, well, essentially the, um, the internet textuality for the reader to figure out that gags are dwarves and welves or elves. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Limbeck isn't really a bad character, uh, but I think his introduction does start to wear out its stay a little, as it's a little long, in my opinion. Um, it kind of gets the ball rolling a little slowly. I think who was ever writing these parts was having too much fun, because, um, again, I just think it's a little long. Uh, then we get to Haplo, um, the character mentioned in the prologue, and this um, story um, is again interesting as it's simultaneously, simultaneously, excuse me, disorienting you and making you interested enough to keep wanting more. Um, and there is a twist shortly before the halfway point that is one of the best executed I've ever seen um, or read, rather, in my opinion. Um, though it wasn't as big in some ways as I would have initially thought, um, this is actually relevant to. Um, I don't know, um, the other work I've read by Hickman and Weiss, um, I think this is actually better than at least the first three Dragonlance novels, uh, or at least definitely books two and three of that. I'm actually, funnily enough, reading Time of the Twins right now, though, so we'll see what I think after finishing that. Um, we also have other characters such as Alfred and Bane. Um, they're kind of an odd duo, and Haplo and Limbeck um, kind of make the group as well with those two, while Hugh is maybe... Not as important as he initially seemed. Um, uh, it's it's a pretty interesting dynamic going on here. It's not really D and D party material. It's kind of a weird ragtag group. My one complaint is really the lack of uh, women characters. Um, for Jare, um, I think that's how you say her name. I don't know. Uh, a gag um, or gag, whatever the heck. Uh, and Limbeck's betrothed is one of the couple. Iridol is another one, um, and neither are 
super, super important. At least they only are for certain segments of the story. Um, Weiss and Hickman that really, um, though, again, have up their game. The writing and dialogue are all loads better than the Dragonlance Chronicles. The characters are loads better as well. World building is more interesting, more original. Um, actually, it's rather original. Like, Arianus, where this story takes place, is just a bunch of floating rocks. And there's, like, a giant storm that separates the lower parts from, like, the the middle part and the middle part is separated from the high part by a, a cloud of ice if i'm remembering correctly and so it's pretty interesting world building actually as far as fantasy worlds go it's probably one of the more interesting i've ever read not just compared to Dragonlance. and um we also do have some footnotes explaining some of the terms unique to the story and setting as well in the book uh there, there's not a lot of these but they were still kind of nice to know in a way um but, but it's interesting because arianus is a part of a sunder world uh, again, landmass stuff floating in the um, air. The world is sort of science fiction-y um, with a lot of fantasy vibes. So uh, I would say it is a little intimidating knowing that it's seven books long. Uh, it's not like super scary. I mean, since the books aren't super long, I've read way longer series than that. Um, considering they had, you know, series had more books and had bigger books anyways. Um, but since I generally don't read a ton of a series like all in one sitting you know i won't read the second or third book probably for a little bit um that i feel like it's just gonna take me a while to finish all seven um though i do plan on finishing all seven i have copies of all seven um, but it's definitely an interesting um fantasy that you might want to try out it, i think it was more popular probably back in the 90s um than it has been in the past decade or more but if you like weiss and hickman you'd probably like this as well so there's kind of no reason not to try it if you like those two. And if you didn't really like Dragonlance Chronicles and you just thought that they could have improved, then maybe read this and see if they have improved. So anyways, Liam Liam's Lyceum, I'll catch you next time.